Hey guys, this is going to be a quick video showing you how you can adjust your scenes to work faster in Cineware for Illustrator. The good thing is that we have a lot of flexibility to adjust our scenes and tune them based on what we value most. Clean and detailed renders or fast previews. And of course, everything in between. Something you need to keep in mind when uh, working with uh, 3D scenes is that every little effect and option you enable will have an impact on the final render time. So unless you need to preview everything in final quality, you can work much faster by only enabling what is needed in order to preview your artwork. I would suggest to work with really basic settings in order to get as fast feedback as possible, and once ready to do the final render, then enable all the extra effects. So let's see how we can get fast previews with our C4D scenes. One of the best modes to work with when aiming for fast feedback is the draft mode. This is an OpenGL representation of your scene, and it will render things as fast as possible. The OpenGL mode works really fast, but it can slow things down when using a high resolution for final output. So for quick feedback, use a low resolution, and once ready, switch to a higher one. We can easily set the speed impact of high resolution with uh, this simple example. Here we have just a cube and a pyramid. I have three versions of this file, but in each one of these, the resolution is slightly bigger than the previous one. So the first file has a resolution of 800 by 450, the second one has a resolution of 1280 by 720, and finally the third one has a resolution of 2500 by 1400. Now if we jump back into Illustrator, you will notice the speed difference there. So the first file with the lowest resolution has a really speedy navigation. As you can see, the edges, if we zoom in, are not so clean, but at this moment when we're trying to figure out the composition and apply textures to our file, it's not so important. Now let's go to the second file. Here as you can see, our edges are a little bit cleaner since we have a set up a bigger resolution. The navigation is still quite speedy, but we lost a tiny bit of speed compared to the previous file. You might not be able to see it clearly here, but it is noticeable to me when I'm rotating the mouse. It's still very usable though, so this might be a good compromise if you want to have a bit cleaner edges and previews in general. One thing to keep in mind, of course, is that speed will change depending on how complex your scene is. So if, for example, you have millions of polygons in your scene, this resolution might not be so easy to navigate, and you would have to lower it a little bit in order to navigate smoothly. So don't try to apply exactly these resolutions to your settings. Try to adjust the settings depending on your scene and how much you prefer quality over speed. Finally, when we move to this scene, you will notice that everything is super smooth, but at the same time the navigation suffers. So we only get a few frames per second, which can make things difficult if we want to position things around. Now this speed drop also applies to textures. So when I apply a texture to the low resolution file, the whole procedure happens almost immediately. And now if I do the same in the high resolution file, it will take a second or so to happen. This might not seem like a lot, but if you want to keep modifying your design, you wouldn't want to wait uh, for these updates to happen. Again, it's up to personal preference, and that's the good thing with the Centerware plugin. We have the possibility to fine-tune things depending on our needs. On top of that, if we want to work on our design without constant updating of the texture when updating our artwork, we have two ways of working with that. The first one is to freeze the texture updating, and the second one is to work within a group. Let's start with the texture updating first. Here as you can see, I am making a change and the texture is updating. If I want to make changes in bulk and don't want to wait for every change, I can momentarily freeze the texture updating by selecting my C4D instance here and pressing this button. Now I can adjust the colors, manipulate the elements, and as you can see, nothing happens. Now once I'm all set, I can trigger the texture updating again, and I'm good to go. Alternatively, working inside a group will also not trigger a render until you exit that group. 
So let's go inside the group and start playing around with her scene. I'm going to add an element, adjust a couple of things, and nothing happens. Now when I exit the group, all these changes will apply. Now if we combine this with the smaller rendering previews mentioned before, we can work with the designs really fast. My suggestion would be to have two or more render settings on your file and switch between them depending on what you do. Let me open up another file in Cinema in order to explain this a little bit better. So here, if I go to my render settings, you will notice I have two settings there. One, which I named low and has a low resolution as the output, and another one, which has a high resolution. Now when I'm working with my scene and modifying things, I can use the low resolution setting, and when I'm ready for final output, I can use the high resolution. Let's see how that looks in Illustrator. We have the low resolution setting here, and like in the previous uh, example, things are a little bit blocky but very fast to work with. Now let's say I'm finished with my adjustments, and I want to switch to the high resolution. I can go back to Cinema, switch to the high resolution setting, save my file, and now when I go back to Illustrator, the high resolution setting will be applied. To create these settings, you either click on the red setting button, or a faster way is to just control drag an already existing setting, which just duplicates it, and then we can go ahead and start modifying things. So that's the draft mode. What about all the other rendering modes? What if you want to preview things while having the final render look in mind? We have the ability to do that, and we need to apply the same logic as before. The more stuff we enable, the longer it will uh, take to get some feedback. Keep that always in mind when working with 3D. So let's see the settings. The draft mode is great for fast feedback. It's basically the equivalent of a one pass progressive render. So it's meant to give you the fastest possible rendering. It's going to be noisy, but it will give you the final look of your artwork as fast as possible. The high render setting is kind of a catch-all setting, so it will always give you clean results, but your scene might not need such high settings. So if you have access to cinema, the best setting for final renders is the custom one. This is where you can basically fine-tune your scene and get exactly the result you want. Fast and noisy renders, or clean renders but highly optimized to your scene. So let's take this asset as an example. Let's see how we can adjust it to our liking. Let's first make a render. As you can see, the scene renders quite fast, but we might want to speed things up even further. As I mentioned before, every setting we apply in our 3D scene has an impact on render time. For example, shadows. Shadows are great for final renders, but we don't really need them when we're preparing our scene. So let's disable those and see what will happen. We managed to reduce the render time by quite a lot, from 9 seconds to 6, and just by disabling shadows. Now another thing we don't really need for previewing is reflections, so let's disable those as well. Now we went from 6 to 4 seconds. We can further speed things up if we don't use anti-aliasing. So now I will switch to the standard renderer and disable that. And now we manage to get a render in a second. Since I decreased the rendering time, I'm going to start adding back some of the effects. So I will bring back the reflections and let's see what will happen. It renders in 2 seconds. To reduce the render time and maintain the reflections, I'm going to go back to my output settings and reduce the resolution. I'm going to reduce it to 600 pixels, and now if I render again, I'm back to the 1 second render. Now if we go back and forth between the original and the new setting, the only thing we're missing is shadows and a little bit of anti-aliasing, but we managed to reduce render times dramatically. Of course, we can still reduce the render time a little bit more to get a nearly instant result, but I think this is good enough. And that's what you should keep in mind when preparing your scenes. 
Depending on what we're willing to give away, we can have a really speedy feedback when working with 3D inside Illustrator. So let's load two scenes in Illustrator. One that gives us a nice image with shadows and all effects enabled, and another one that gives us most of the effects except shadows, but renders as fast as possible. You will notice the difference immediately when we switch both files to custom render. As you can see, the file with the final render look will render fast, but it's not going to be as fast as a more simplified file. The simplified version gives us very fast renders and we still get to preview reflections and the overall final look of our file. We sure don't get shadows, but at this point in our design we don't really care about them. So let's move the text up and down and let's see how responsive the two files are. As you can see, the file on the left is much slower than the file on the right, where the feedback is almost immediate. And that's the beauty of the plugin. We can fine-tune our scenes exactly to the settings that work for us and our workflow. So to summarize, whether you want to work on OpenGL mode or the custom render mode, you have a lot of options in order to customize your scene. The only thing you need to do is find out the options that are valuable to you and you're good to go. In my case, I value interactivity a lot more, so I'm just dropping down a lot of the different effects and when ready for final render, I'm just adjusting everything to higher quality. I hope that sheds some more light to the rendering options of uh, Cineware for Illustrator. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them below and I'll do my best to answer them. And as always, if you found this uh, video helpful, consider subscribing to the channel. Talk soon!